Have you ever seen a material imbalance like this? Couple of bishops controlling the center with a pawn on e2, which has potential to become a queen. In the meantime, white's queen is so passive, it just has to sit there to stop black from getting a queen. This game took place in the Vergani Cup. Let's introduce the players. Anne-Marie is from Germany with a rating of 2236. She is 18 years old. Max Warmerdam is from Holland with a rating of 2506. He is an IM, but in the tournament he got his final GM norm. He scored 7 out of 9, taking first place in the Vergani Cup. He is 20 years old. On the 7th of January, he tweeted this. Just finished the second Vergani Cup by scoring my last Grandmaster norm to become a Grandmaster. I wasn't sure what to expect after nine months of absence from classical chess, but it was difficult to imagine this happening. Life goal achieved. Congratulations to Max Warmerdam. There will be a quiz at the end to test what you have learned in this video, so stick around until the end. Anne-Marie Mouche has white, Max Vardaman has black. The game began e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. We have a scotch game. Take, take, center opens up, knight's in the middle, black now develops with tempo with bishop c5. Getting the bishop out and attacking the knight at the same time. Knight b3, bishop back to b6, keeping an eye on the f2 pawn. Knight c3, knight f6, white now plays a weird move with queen e2, deliberately blocking this bishop in, but you want to move this bishop, and white plans to castle, queenside. Queen e2, castle, bishop e3. Black's bishop on b6 is so powerful, white wants to trade it off. But max just strikes in the center with d5. White castles at the same time pinning this pawn to the queen. After bishop e3, d5 was played, but there's a call move beginning with rook e8. f3, defending your center, and now knight e7. The point is you're going to come to d5. It's a really cool line given in Jon Ludwig Hammer's course. On chess 24, Hammer's openings for black. Let's have a look at a couple of lines. I'm not going to show everything because Hammer did all the work. For his course on chess 24, after knight e7, let's check out the normal move, castle, you go c6. But if you play g4, the point is knight d5. Really cool move. If take, 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 king b1, I would say black's a bit better here. Black's got more potential. This knight could sit on f4. Defended by a queen. This a file gives black chances. Maybe play b5, this queen can sneak out. d4, self-pinning because this pawn can't move. Or can it? This pawn is defended by knight, bishop and queen. White also has three on it. Knight, bishop, rook. Let's see what happens. King out the way. a5, knight, b5. White now has four pieces on this pawn. Bishop, knight, knight, rook. Looks like this pawn is dropping. But not in the way you would expect. Max Vardaman now sacrifices the queen, taking the bishop. D takes e3. This is not a tactical queen sacrifice, but a positional one. This is a long-term queen sacrifice. It is all about getting control of lots of key central squares. Rook takes queen, take. This pawn is under attack, so white plays f3. Let's consider the values of the pieces. This rook controls the entire default. This bishop controls this pawn, which is such a thorn in the white position. Whereas this queen is so passive. What has black achieved? Black has got the imbalance. White has a queen for rook and bishop. But white's queen is a passive piece. I would pick black here because black's moves are easier. f3, bishop e6, another piece in the game, facing the king. Knight c1. Ideas of playing knight d3 just to block off the d-file for black's rook. Knight d7, queen e1, allowing the bishop in the game. Two plans for white. Let's try to get these pawns rolling. Because it's very difficult to get your pieces moving. So if you can make some advances on the king side, let's say playing f4 and f5 being the key move that gets a lot of space, white might be coming back in the game. Another way to play is to retreat this knight, as Anne-Marie did in the game. 
knight c3 to d1, putting pressure on e3. However, in this position, she wasted a move with bishop e2. Knight comes into c4. This knight is pretty dangerous, so take, take, and then knight c3. So, Anne-Marie has wasted a move. She could have played this before. There was no need to put the bishop on e2 and then take. This knight is coming round to grab this annoying pawn in white's position. Rook d2, hitting the g2 pawn, hitting the c2 pawn. Maybe ideas of knight b4 coming here or knight d4. Rook d2, knight d1. The pawn on e3 is worth so much, Max now decides to sacrifice. With rook takes d1. Another positional long-term sacrifice. It's all about controlling central squares. Queen takes d1, rook d8. Let's assess this position. The rook controls the default. The bishops slice the board towards the king's side. This pawn on e3 is still alive, which is black's greatest asset. The knight blocks the default and h6. This is just a waiting move. Just passing and asking, what is white going to play now? Queen out of the way, knight b4. There was this really weird line with rook takes d3. I'm glad Max didn't play this, or else I might not have showed this game. Take, bishop takes d3 check, king a1, knight d4. The point is knight c2 check and we get some kind of perpetual. Can't play a3 because of knight b3. By the way, b3 doesn't work because knight c2 check. And black is the one winning. King b2, bishop d4, it's game over. King b1, this knight, can give a double checkmate. Knight on a3. Pretty cool double mate. After knight d4, how about queen c3? Knight c2 check, king b1, knight b4 check, and there we have it, the perpetual. You can't go to a1 because knight a2 will pick up the queen. You have to go in a corner, so knight c2 check, and then we get this really weird perpetual. I'm really glad Max didn't go for that. Knight b4 played, take, take, rook d1, take, take, e2. Queen needs to go to e1, or else bishop f2 was a threat. Now black clamps down on the position with bishop e3. Have you ever seen a material imbalance like this? Couple of bishops controlling the center with a pawn on e2, which has potential to become a queen. In the meantime, white's queen is so passive, it just has to sit there to stop black from getting a queen. Let's see the rest. a3, c5. Not letting white out. Take, take. Can't play this because bishop f2 forcing a queen. White goes g3, bishop d4, king a1, b5, c3, take, take, bishop back, king b2, bishop d3. White can go to squares b3, b4, a3, but there's no way to come forward to make progress. h4, king f8, king, 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 bishop, king, 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 bishop, king up, g6, king up, bishop c4, King a3, king e7. A lot of shuffling around here. Looks like neither side can make progress. But black is the one holding all the cards. Just trying to move and move, finding a break. So g5 finally happens. Take, take. King there. Bishop in. Check. King. A lot of shuffling. Black is just waiting for his moment. Bishop back. King across. Bishop back. King. King up. And finally, we have a chance to break through with g4. F4 check played, a good move from Anne-Marie. King has to go back. Notice you can't actually take this or else it is white, who is all of a sudden winning because the queen now gets into the game. Queen h1 check, the only check. King can only go to f5. White now comes in with the queen, picking up everything. Just goes to show how tough chess can be. The game just turns around all of a sudden. Queen d5 check. The king can only go to g6, then you pick up this bishop, check, and then you pick up the other bishop, game over. f4 check, max has to go back. King up, king d6, king c6, king across, king. A lot of shuffling, he's waiting, he's waiting, bishop controls that square, and f5. e5 played, another option was to take, because after take, then queen h1. This is a really nice defensive technique. 
Why has been waiting the whole game? You may be thinking, why needs to keep waiting? No, if there's a pawn break, why can seize her chance? The queen could go to h1, and there are options. Queen h7 check, queen d5 check. In the meantime, this queen still guards that square. So this was another way to keep the position open. Not only for the bishops, but for white's queen. e5 push, bishop there, king back, king in, check, king in. In this position, white has to play queen e1. White has to go passive, which makes sense. White's queen has been passive the entire game. If queen e1 looks like there might not be a good way to make progress, the reason is this pawn needs to be protected by that bishop. You can't move this bishop away or else you drop that pawn. However, in the game, Anne-Marie was ambitious and played e6, giving black a chance to come in. Pause the video now or let the timer run. Can you see what black played in this position? The move is bishop e4, vacating the d3 square. This queen doesn't attack this pawn anymore, which seems very surprising because in the entire game, this queen has been on e1. It looks like this bishop can't move, but Max took his chance. Bishop to e4, queen e1 and king d3. The king is finally in. Two bishops, one pawn against a lone white queen. No chance. Queen b1 check, king e3, queen g1 check. And a call cool move just to finish it off. Because the truth is, white can't take this bishop. The truth is, black doesn't need to defend the bishop. Black can just go to the left, king f3. This bishop is hanging, but this pawn has the potential to become a queen. Here, white resigned, but I think white should just play on a little bit because there is this threat of this pawn pushing. You just need to make sure black is able to finish it off in style. Let's see a few more moves. Just want to show you. If queen takes bishop, queen, e7, it looks like black is completely winning. But if there's no good way for you to stop this pawn, and there's no good checkmate with the bishop and queen, then maybe white has found a way out. Except there is no way out. Queen b1 check, king a3. We need the bishop to control that square, so bishop c2. Threatening checkmate here. But let's just continue a little bit. You can't queen because it's mate. So let's go check first. This is what I was worried about. King takes, and now you get a queen. White has two queens. Black has a bishop and a queen, but it is black's move. Pause the video now, or let it run. Can you find a way for black to win? You don't play queen a1 check. The king escapes. You need to stop that escape square. Max may have seen all the way up to this point but it's good if Anne-Marie tested him. The only winning move for black is b4 check. Here, the king cannot go anywhere. This would have been mate if there's no pawn, so let's take checkmate in three moves. Queen a1 check now works. Can't go anywhere, but you have a queen, so you can block. The queen goes back. Pause the video now or let it run. Can you find checkmate in two moves? The next move is queen c3 check. Same problem, king can't move. You just block for one move and then queen b3. Time for a quiz. Bishop e3 was played in the game. d5 was what black played. Do you remember another option I mentioned here, which is in Jan Ludwig Hammer's course on Chess24? Hammer's openings for black. What's another way to treat this position? Another option is to play rook e8, and after f3, this is a really cool move. The really cool move is knight e7, all about controlling that square. If you castle c6, and if g4, you can actually play knight d5. Take, take. If take, you can take king b1. And black has a nice position. 
Next position, black has just played knight e5. Can you give two plans? Two ways for white to untangle his pieces. How to unravel. One plan is to go f4. Then try and get g4 in and even h4. If you can't move these pieces, at least you can move some of your pawns on the king side. The other move is knight c3, which I mentioned. No need to waste a move with bishop e2. Just get the knight back here and then the knight back there coming in to take this pawn. Knight d1 was played. How did black continue? Because black may be in some trouble, as the knight on d1 will take the pawn on e3. Black sacrificed once again. Rook takes d1. Then brought the rook back into d8. And there's a lot of central control for black. g4 might be a bit too early here. Because after f4 check, notice black cannot take on e4. Do you know why? All of a sudden, the queen can now get in the game. With queen h1 check, the king is running out of squares. He can go to f5 to d3. Whichever square it goes to, it will lose a bishop. If king f5, check. King can only go to e6 and then queen e4, check. Picking up the bishop. If king d3, checkmate in three moves. Can you see all three? The first move is queen b1, check. Meaning the king has to go up. Then the next move is queen c1, check. The king has to go back, then the queen comes up to c2 and is actually boxed in by its own two bishops and pawn. Checkmate. Let's play it. Queen b1 check, forward, queen c1 check, back, then queen c2 is mate. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. I hope you enjoyed this positional queen sacrifice game. If you did, why not give the video a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell, then YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.